this is what motivates me to make videos for you guys thank you a database is collection of data that is related to each other now this is really vague just a collection of data that is related to each other so if that is the case then this is a ppt that has collection of data and all the data that is there on this ppt is related to each other does that make this ppt a database hey guys welcome to our first ever dbms tutorial today we'll learn some basic terminologies that you need to know before starting the study of the subject dbms so which are the terminologies first one is data second one is information third one is database and fourth one is dbms first we'll look at the definitions then we'll look at some examples of each all right so let's get started with first with data so what is data data means uh, some raw facts that are unorganized okay and can be recorded and are implicit now this is the definition of data now you might be using data and information interchangeably in real life but these are two completely different things okay let's look at an example for data first then i'll tell you what makes data different from information so this is an example of data ellis scored 100 in science charlie scored 80 in science brandon scored 72 in science and david scored 39 in science all right so this is example of data this is just facts okay this is unorganized raw facts now is it organized in some sort of order of a b c d that is alphabetically no it is not it is just raw facts now let's look at information what is information information is something when a data is processed in a given context okay so when you have a purpose to process the data that is you have an intention to process the data to get something a desired result okay and make it useful it is called information all right let's look at an example so you understand it better so we had the raw data okay we had the raw data of the marks scored by the students in science let's assume that there were only four students in that class okay and now we find average marks of student scored in science in that class so we had the raw data which was unorganized okay you process that data okay that is you add all the marks of all the students 100 then 80 then 72 and then 39 you get 291 you divide them by 4 you get the average marks as 72.75 hence you get the average marks scored by the student in a class in science is 72.75 now this is a process information with a context kept in mind okay and hence you get that information from the raw data now let's look at the definition of a database what is database database definition might fool anyone but it is actually vague so let's look at it a database is collection of data that is related to each other now this is really vague just a collection of data that is related to each other so if that is the case then this is a ppt that has collection of data and all the data that is there on this ppt is related to each other does that make this ppt a database no there are some criterias that a database should follow to be called as a database which are those criterias first criteria a database should represent real world or mini world so that changes that happen in real world should be reflected in the database immediately or as soon as possible so that the database is always updated all right second thing database should be a collection of logical and coherent data not some random data now what do you mean by logical and coherent data and not some random data we'll look at an example for this so that you understand what is random data and what is logical and coherent data coherent means something that actually comes from a single category okay and the data exists with a logic over there okay though that is this data means facts but not necessary all the facts that exist are logical we'll look at an example you'll understand it better third thing a database should be created with three things in mind so you need to check all these three criteria to see if a collection of information is a database or just a collection of information first thing that you need to check is of course an intended group of users okay that is specific purpose is the second thing but an intended group of users who are going to use the database second thing a specific purpose okay a database should be always created with a specific purpose in mind and the third thing a preconceived application that these intended users have in mind okay so first thing 
a specific purpose with which the database is created an intended group of users that is those who are going to use the database and the third a preconceived application that this intended users have in mind so how they are going to use it or for what they are going to use the database let's look at an example of a collection of information this is example one okay here we have given information of alice brandon charlie and david alice likes ice cream brandon is in fifth standard charlie is allergic to dust david rides a bike okay second row Alice scored 100 in science, Brandon scored 35 in English, Charlie scored 29 in history and David failed in geography. Third row, Alice has blue shirt and has no cell phone, Charlie goes swimming every week and David sometimes sings. So this is the information that is given. Okay. Now this is a collection of information. Let's look at the criteria now to see if this is an actual database. Okay. So a database should represent real world or mini world. All right. So this is representing a real world or mini world. Any changes made can be reflected over here. Fine. Okay. Let's look at the second criteria. Database should be a collection of logical and coherent data, not some random data. All right. So this is where this collection of information does not follow the second criteria. Okay. This is random information. Though, although it is about the same student, Alice, Brandon, Charlie and David, but it is a random information. There is not a specific coherent information that is provided. Like for example, if it was like this, Alice likes ice cream, Brandon likes chocolate, Charlie likes something else and David likes something else. Then this is something, a column of the same logical coherent data. That is something that the student likes. Okay. Or Alice scored 100 in science, Brandon scored something in science, Charlie scored something in science and David scored something in science. Then this would have been again a logical and coherent information that is related to each other. But is this information all related to each other? No. Hence, it does not follow the second criteria. And a database should always follow all the three criteria. So even if it does not follow a single criteria, then it is not a database. So this is just a collection of information, not a database. Let's look at example two. Here we have student name, marks in science, percentage of attendance and parents contact number. Okay, let's look at the criteria now. Database should be representation of real world. So yes, this is a representation of real world or mini world. Now let's look at the second criteria. Database should be a collection of logical and coherent data, not some random data. Again, second criteria, we have common logical and coherent data for student name, marks in science, percentage of attendance and parents contact number. So all these four things or three things that you can say about all these students are common, logical and coherent, not some random, random information. Let's look at the third criteria. A database should be created with three things in mind. A specific purpose. All right. Let's look at what can be a specific purpose of this. This can be used as a attendance sheet or this can be information about marks in science or this can be about contact information of the parents of the respective students. So yes, it has a specific purpose in mind. Now let's look at the second one an intended group of users. Of course, it has intended group of users. The intended group of users are teachers and parents. All right. So over here, the teachers can check the marks of the student, the percentage of attendance of the student, and then contact the parents if it is needed. Similarly, parents also can come and check the attendance, check the marks of the students in the class. All right. So there are intended group of users and a preconceived application that these intended users have in mind. So as we have already seen it, it has a preconceived application that is a teacher can use it to call the parents. If the percentage of attendance and marks are below a certain number of fixed limit. All right. So all the three criteria are followed. Hence, this qualifies as a database. Now let's look at the definition of DBMS. A database management system or a DBMS is collection of program that enables users to create and maintain a database. Okay. Now this might sound very simple, just collection of program that enable users to create and maintain database. Now let's look at the purpose of DBMS. Okay. Now this is a database management system. It is program that enables the users to create and maintain a database. But what is the purpose of DBMS? Why can't we just write it in a table and use it? So the DBMS is a general purpose so system software that facilitates processes of defining, constructing, manipulating and sharing database among the various users and application. Now, 
what do you mean by defining constructing manipulating and sharing database okay let's look at this defining database so basically defining database you specify the data types the structure the constraint of the data that is to be stored in the database now what do you mean by data types for example you want to store numbers like integers then you specify the data type as int if you want to write a word in the database okay or store some names you can store them in a data type of strings similarly you provide the structures and the constraint now structure is how many entries should be made the constraint should be like what is the maximum limit word limit okay or what is the length of the sentence or the string that should be there in the data type so these are specifying the data type structures and constraints of the data to be stored in the database this is called defining the database now let's look at the construction of database what do you mean by construction of the database constructing the database is process of storing the data on some storage device okay now can it be stored on any storage device no it can be stored only on the storage devices that are under the control of dbms that is database management system so that it can be on a server or it can be on a hard drive or it can be on some other pc okay as long as it can be controlled by the dbms you can store the information of the database on that storage device all right so this is called database construction third thing is data manipulation okay now what do you mean by data manipulation manipulating a database includes functions such as querying the database updating the data etc so what do you mean by querying the database querying the database means you send a query to the database to retrieve some certain information okay for example you can send a query to a database of the students whose attendance is less than 75% okay so you will get a list of the students whose attendance is less than 75% you can update the data in the database what do you mean by that so example suppose a student is absent today okay and by the end of the day the teacher goes to the system and updates the list of the students who are present today and who are absent today and the attendance of the student gets updated so this is called updating the database okay so these are the functions that you can do using manipulation of the database now final and the fourth one was sharing the database now what do you mean by sharing the database sharing the database means the database management system allows multiple users okay multiple users to access the database send queries to the database and also create reports from the data so that multiple users can use same database at the same time without having any issue so that's it for today guys thank you very much for watching if you have any queries feel free to ask them in the comment section below if you have any suggestions please write them in the comment section below if you like the video please share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you very much